We all know the scene. You are happily working away on your latest affiliate project, looking forward to a seasonal uplift in traffic, when all of a sudden the Google gods speak to you. Our December 2021 product reviews update is now rolling out for English language pages. It will take about three weeks to complete. We have also extended our advice for product review creators. Hey dude, change everything now, man. I, I, I mean, yeah, sure. You, you just need to install a, a custom theme onto your website that makes it load in 0.0000000001 seconds and your rankings will bounce back. Absolutely guaranteed. Now look, use. it's dead simple. All you gotta do is buy the product, review the product, take photos and video of the product if you so wish, and then keep the product in a big room with all your other products for about 15 or 20 years. And then when it becomes a vintage item, sell it for a profit like I did with this lovely snow tiger hat. You can't lose. Not to mention the social media darlings who love to say, SEO is dead. Back on planet Earth, the dust has now settled on the December 2021 product review update that Google kindly gave us as a lovely advent gift. And now that the SERPs have finally settled down, I've dug into seven niches to find out what the top ranking sites have in common and how closely they follow the Google review guidelines. Hey there affiliate schoolers and welcome to this video in which I'm going to be delving into the data behind the recent Google product review update in which I'll be giving you some real actionable steps to take in order to make sure your affiliate sites can rank. By the end of this video you'll know what you need to do now and what you need to do over time to give your affiliate sites the best possible chance of having their ranking stick or improve. For this analysis I took the guidelines and broke them down into 12 categories. I then took three top performing websites across those seven niches and assessed them for a semi-competitive keyword with search volume of more than 100. For each point on the Google review update that they tick off, they get one point with a maximum score of 12 for each website. What I was really looking for here was to see if there were any patterns across the board and to see if there were niches that were perhaps being treated differently to other niches. Jason, you will not go unpunished for your transgressions. Now before I jump into the data, if your site has been hit by the Google product review update, I would love to hear about it, whether that's good or bad. So leave a comment down below and I will do my best to reply to every single comment. I will certainly read them all and it's really useful to get that discussion going. Let's take a look at how I structured the data and the niches that I chose to focus on for this analysis. So the, the niches that I chose were beauty, finance, DIY, kitchen, garden, food and drink, and tech. And for each niche, I conducted a single search that showed sites with a DA of less than 50 that were on page one. And I used search queries that had more than 100 searches per month on average. I did use Google UK for all of these searches except for one. And that was purely because I wanted to keep the location as irrelevant as possible. And as I was searching from the UK, it just made sense to use UK searches. I used a, a mixture of review and best of type keywords for this analysis. And everything was linked to the 12 bullet points in the most recent Google product review update. So the, the big question is, I suppose the reason you're here is what did I find? Well, let's go through it. So I looked at 21 websites in total, three websites for each niche. And there were two categories that every single website hit and they were evaluating the product from the user's perspective and describing how the design impacts on the user beyond what manufacturers give you. There were two categories that pretty much none of the websites hit and that was providing links to multiple 
places to purchase. Only two out of the 21 websites hit that criteria and making reference to other models by the same brand in the review was only hit on five out of the 21 websites. Now this next one's a big one because this is one that has really caused a lot of uproar and it's about the use of unique images. And what I found was in this research that only one third of the websites that I looked at had unique images or multimedia on their review. And perhaps even more interestingly was that within the DIY and finance niche, none of the, the websites that I looked at included unique images. Now I can kind of understand that for the finance niche, but for DIY, I was really surprised at that. One of the most simple criteria in the update is to include pros and cons. Now only eight out of the 21 sites that I looked at included pros and cons. That's something that's pretty much a, a quick and easy fix for most people you would think, but still only just over a third of them did it. Most of the reviews that I looked at had explanations that set that product apart from its competitors and 15 out of the 21, so just over two thirds, included links to alternative products. Another big topic of discussion amongst affiliates is EAT, otherwise known as Expertise, Authority and Trust. And this was another interesting one because two thirds of all the sites that I looked at did include evidence of expertise. That was either through showing a, a bio or a link to a bio or evidence within the copy itself. I did find out of the niches that I looked at that tech, DIY and food and drink were the least likely to adhere to the, the Google product guidelines whereas it was the beauty and gardening niches that were most likely to hit more of the guidelines. So that's what the data shows us, but it's fair to say that my resources were fairly limited and the data set is not that expansive. So we do need to take that with a pinch of salt. However, I do also have some anecdotal findings, things that I've seen through the research that I, I put together for this, but also from my own websites too. The first one, and this is a big bugbear for lots of SEOs and affiliate marketers, is that, that there still seems to be a huge amount of high DA, non-relevant websites ranking for keywords that quite frankly, they probably shouldn't be ranking for. That being said, I also found lots of very rankable keywords for low DA sites and search terms that had all pretty low DA sites on page one, but sites that were relevant to the niche. So those keywords are still out there but I think it is becoming a little bit more difficult to find them. Now, I'm not sure if Google really wants this to be the case, so I wouldn't necessarily think that is going to be the long-term trend, because to me, the whole, the whole focus of this review update is that Google wants true, honest, reviews and Google have said it doesn't you know your site does not need to be the most powerful in order to rank and it doesn't need to have lots of links in order to rank now we know that's not necessarily 100% true but I do think it does give hope to niche websites that follow completely white hat processes my next point and this really is my own opinion is that I still don't think Google can 100% identify whether an image is completely unique or not. I think they can certainly identify commonly used images. So I do think it will become best practice 100% to try and move away from using product photographs. But I think there are opportunities for us to, to work around that even without getting the products ourselves. And finally, if you are a person that is using display ads on your website, don't panic because pretty much every single website that I looked at out of the 21 was using some form of display ads. So there's been a lot of discussion around whether display ads slow down a site or, or, or create issues in terms of engagement that could have a knock-on effect from an SEO point of view. I don't think that is the case and it certainly didn't come through in the research that I put together for this video. If you are getting value from this video, it would make my day if you could just hit the like button. It shows me that you're finding this content useful. And if you're interested in SEO and affiliate marketing, then this is the place to be. So please consider subscribing to make sure you don't miss out on any of our future videos. 
In a second, I'm going to be taking a look at actions to take now and actions to take in the future with your affiliate websites to make sure you're adhering to best practices. But in the meantime, if you, if you have been hit by the recent product update and you haven't recovered yet in terms of rankings, then the chances are you're probably not going to see a massive amount of upward movement from now until the next big update. Now, spoiler alert, there will be another product review update and actually they're, they're rolling out periodically all the time with minor tweaks coming out. Google announced the last one and said that this was a major update, which is why they announced it, but they are making changes all the time. So don't hang about. At the same time, don't panic and think you have to do everything all in one go, but you do need to start taking action. I also think it's really worth pointing out that just because your website has dropped in rankings, it doesn't necessarily mean that you've been punished by Google. And actually Google have come out themselves and said this, what the, the language that they would rather use is that other websites have been rewarded, which essentially has then pushed your website further down the rankings. Now the good news there is that it means you've not had any kind of penalty put on your website. Your website has not necessarily been labeled as a, a bad review site. So if you do the right things and jump through the hoops that Google wants you to jump through, the chances are you will be able to recover. So if you have been hit and I've had emails and messages from lots of people over the last couple of weeks that have been hit, don't panic. And finally, just before I do jump into those, those steps to take, if you want a copy of the audit, the spreadsheet that I used to put together this research, and you want to use it to audit your own websites or your own pages on your sites, then uh, I'll drop a link down below, follow that link, download the, the spreadsheet, and you can use it on your own sites just to get an idea of, of where you're at. So let's take a look at what steps you should be taking now. The first step that I think you you should definitely take, and it's a fairly quick and easy one, is to have at least some kind of example of expertise. So this can be on an About Us page, it can be through creating bios on your review articles, or even just having a, a couple of bios or a single bio in the, in the sidebar if you have one. Now, the reason I think you should take this action now is because it's quick and easy, and I think it's probably one of the, th the, the most significant influencing factors from this recent update. The second one is another quick and easy win, really. And again, it's something that most of you probably will already have in place, but if you don't, it's, it's easy to do. And that is to add internal links to other resources that are relevant to that review. Now, if you can't link out to resources on your own website, link out to external resources, that's still gonna hit that bullet point. Um, and particularly if you are in a YMYL, so a finance or a health type niche, then I think it's definitely worthwhile citing external sources and linking out to those. And the final thing that I think you should try and do pretty much straight away is to try and include some unique images. Now that doesn't mean that you necessarily need to go out and buy the products. What I would suggest that you do in the first instance is take the images that you already have and edit them in some way or create a unique header. I'll show you what I mean by this on my Coffee Grind Guru site and I do this with pretty much all of my review pages. And I don't just do it with Coffee Grind Guru, I do it on my other niche sites as well. And none of them have been hit in, in this recent update. In fact, most of them have moved up either a little bit or moved up quite significantly. So you can see here, what I tend to do is to get a image of the product, put a nice border on it and add some text within there. And then I use this as a review heading. So if I go over to the, the review on the website, you can see, and I just pop it in at the top. And to all intents and purposes, that is a unique image. The rest of the images are taken from uh, the Amazon API. Now the interesting thing with that one is, I actually included that review in the data because the, the, one of the keywords that I used was the, the Keurig K Mini review. And that hit the least amount of points, I think, of all the sites I looked at, maybe other than one. So 
that is not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. So don't go to that page and, and look at that as an example of what to use, but that page is ranking really well and it's a fairly new page, it's a couple of months old. Now you can use, I, I, use, I use Stencil for this, but you could use Canva, which is a free tool and it's really quick and easy to do and then download the image and pop it on your website. So now I just want to take a moment to talk about steps that you can take or should be taking over time. So these are less time sensitive, but I think it's just best practice and things that you probably should be doing and probably are doing already anyway. Uh, and the first thing on the list is to include alternatives within your reviews. So if you are reviewing a specific product, then make sure that somewhere within that review, you are linking to a, an alternative product that does a similar thing. Now in an ideal world, this would be a link to a review on your website, but if not, you could just create a direct affiliate link out to that product and you're gonna hit that bullet point. As you are working through your product reviews, I would highly recommend, if you don't already have this included, include pros and cons. Again, this can be done on buyer's guides and reviews, it can also be done on versus comparison type articles. But again, it's so quick and simple to do. It's just gonna take time to roll out across all sites. Next up, try and include tables that cover categories and score them. So think about things like usability, ease of use, design, things that give categories and actually give them a specific score. This is going to help you hit that bullet point in the guidelines. And the next point is one that certainly nowhere near enough people do, and that is to make relationships, good relationships with your affiliate managers. So reach out to your affiliate managers on various programs, try and establish new ones if you can, don't just settle for Amazon or a single affiliate program. It might be the case that there is only one program, for your particular product. If that is the case, then reach out to the program manager on that if you can. If it's Amazon, forget it. If it's something else, then there's a good chance you will be able to find someone or even someone within the company and make those relationships. The benefit of that is that they're potentially gonna send you a product to review, and if not, you could even ask them to send you some amateur images, so images that they've just taken on their phone, themselves of the product. I've had that offer myself before, where a company are not prepared to send a product, but they're happy to send someone into the warehouse to go and take some photos of the product that you can then use. And you might even be able to negotiate a slightly higher commission for yourself too, so it's definitely worth doing. And finally, I would recommend that you try and embed YouTube videos within your products. This is again going to help you hit that unique and use of media and authenticity bullet point in the guidelines. And if you can go one step further and create that YouTube channel yourself and establish a presence on YouTube, which is owned by Google, don't forget, then that is, is going to help you even more so and potentially drive more traffic through to your website and give you untold benefits. Now that is a big one, but it's probably something that is worth investing in if you're really serious about your affiliate project and if you really want to protect it for the long term. And the final thing that I want you to take away from this video today is to put your audience first and deliver value. I think the days of regurgitating product page information on a, in, in a review are gone. Low quality, not providing value, I think those days are numbered. You will still find the odd website that still manages to rank whatever it does, but for the most part, it's not gonna happen, and for the longer term, it definitely isn't. But before you do any of the stuff that I've suggested in this video, I suggest you watch this video next, which talks about my seven favorite Amazon Associates alternatives. So it's gonna help you find different programs to promote and add extra buying links within your articles. So guys, thank you for watching. It's been a big one, and uh, good luck with your projects. SEO.